Hi, welcome back to the Gapster channel. I'm going to talk today about the Gapster TD1 DAC configuration. We're going to talk about how to configure it in sim mode, which is my favorite, to configure it in a traditional mode and also in balance mode. We're also going to talk about all the different jumpers on the board and how you can get the best sound out of this Gapster TD1 DAC. Now, configuring all the jumpers, what do all the jumpers do? So let's start with uh, these jumpers here. Those two here is if you want DC offset or not. So you can, if you don't want DC offset, you can take them off. This is in case you want to use a capacitor instead. This is J1 and J2. Basically, if you want to provide your own power for the DC offset, you don't want to use the five volt that's coming on the board. So you can pull those uh, jumpers out and provide your and provide your own uh, five volt power for each, either for both of them together or each one of them separately. And then we have a couple of jumpers here. This is for the IV stage for the Oppa 861. This is like your pre-amplifier stage. So if you want to give this part a separate power, so you take those jumpers out and you give it here plus. 5, 0, and minus 5, so you do both, you pull all the jumpers out, and now you basically provide separate power for the left, separate powers for the right. These are all great and amazing, I think if you can do that, sure, go for it, but just bear in mind, every time you do that, you're adding more power supplies. Now let's talk about the jumpers on the back. The default Gapster configuration is uh, running with no DEM capacitor, so you cannot see there is no capacitor. And then we are tying these, the I2S signal to the DEM. And for that, you need to have those two jumpers, so they're on, and uh, the, uh, that's for that. And also, then this is a mode. So the TDA has different modes. If you look at the data sheet, there's different mode for the TDA. So the default mode that, this is my default mode, not the regular default mode, is tying the OB to minus 5 volt. So this is around tying the I2S to the, uh, to the DEM. So that's the way I have it. So OB to minus 5 volt, those two jumpers on. And make sure that the jumper number 24 is not present. This is the version that I like the best. Now, if you want to run it traditionally, like the way when it was invented, uh, which is running on most um, CD players and stuff like that, there was no, none of these were around. So we pull this jumper out, this jumper out, and, and then this one here, instead of going from OB to minus 5 volt, we're going to put it to plus 5 volt. You're going to put it to plus 5 volt and you're going to install your DEM capacitor here and you're also going to jumper, jump these J24, 2 and 4 pins, so 2 and 4 should be connected together. So you do it like this. So capacitor here, OB to plus 5 and this one gets connected here. Now if you're doing it in this mode, there's a different way to put your UFL connectors. So instead of, so you still do your LRCK, your basically SCK, and uh, what you want to do is you no longer use the uh, data write. You just use the D1, DL1, and you make sure that's connected. So this one comes off, and you run it like that. This runs basically the way most uh, CD players were running in the past. So this becomes your traditional mode. And the other way, the way I have it as a default, is actually what we call SIM mode. So to recap again, to uh, run it in a traditional mode, or what's called the time MUX TWC, you have to solder the 470 picofarad capacitor, and it's going to be soldered to those two pads here. So one leg here, one leg here, to solder that. You remove those two jumpers out and you put the uh, mode in between OB and plus 5 volts. So, so OB and plus 5 has to be shorted and the jumper 24 or 24 has to also be uh, jumpered as well. So in this mode you do not need to use 
the, uh, PC, the I2S to PCM converter so you can actually run it freely on its own and like I said before you run the I2S signal go to straight from the FIFO Q7 bypassing there is no uh, I2S to PCM converter so straight from the FIFO Q7 you have all RCX, SCK and the D1 which is data L D1 this one goes to the D1 of the 50Q7 you do not connect the DR and so just you only need three UFL connectors and this is will be what it, you can run this way in a traditional uh, mode kind of like the way most CD players are connected Now to run it in balance mode, and as I said earlier, I strongly advise you to run it in sim mode first with just one board and listen to it and try to memorize and listen to that sound because I want you to use that as a reference. So when you do, you do your uh, balance mode, you can say, okay, did I get a better sound or equal or worse? because the balance mode is dependent on quite a few things. But let's first talk about how to connect it into balance mode. So everything is the same. So you've got your first board connected just like the first sim mode. So the second board is uh, fairly easy. You're basically going to get uh, on the back of the I2S to PCM card just down here. There is two uh, also UFL uh, outputs. So one is uh, LLR and one is uh, basically CK. So you're going to get those two, the LR and CK from underneath for the second board. And then you're going to get DRN and DLN for the second board. And these are going to go respectively in the DL and DR of the second board. Now you have an inverted signal for the second board and together you're going to make a balanced connection. So in balance mode you must use the XLR connectors on each board and each board becomes one channel. So one board becomes left channel and one board becomes right channel. If you are running balance mode all your UFL connectors must be exactly the same size. So if you're doing 10 cm you have to be for both boards and if it's 15 or whatever exactly has to be the same because at this frequency a different lens could cause a skew in the frequencies and you're slightly out of phase. Also your TVA chips have to be very close to each other. Even if they are the same date, the same thing, they may not be exactly timed perfectly and that could also cause issues into with the sound quality. When most DIYers get the board, the first thing that comes to our mind, and that's including myself, I bought a few boards, is how we're going to modify it, how we're going to change the capacitors, change this, do this, change the IV stage, use tubes, do this. I know we all want to do that, but trust me, I've spent pretty much over six months on this board trying so many different things. I've tried everything you can try on this board and I've spent nights and days on it. And I came up with this uh, particular uh, conclusion. Uh, and a favorite mode that I like the best. So at least try it. That's all I'm asking you to do. Just give it a try. And if you want to try different ideas, maybe get a different board, build another one with different ideas, and then you can compare them side by side. Because unless you have an A, B comparison, you're not going to find out if your thousand dollar capacitors did make a difference. Uh, when changing, for example, capacitors, there's things that are more important than the capacitor itself, its location, how close it is, and sometimes bigger is not better. So there, there's all these things and all the parts that are on this board, I've tried different ones and I came up with these for a reason. So just give them a try and then experiment. And if you find something better, share it with me and with us and we all would like to learn from each other and try different things. Uh, for those who definitely want to try different IV stage, there are basically provisions on the board where you can actually get the sound before the pre-amplification and use, for example, a tube stage or whatever you'd like to do. But I urge you again to try this uh, uh, IV stage because it is 
pretty darn amazing. Also, I get a lot of questions on why don't you do this, why don't you do that, and uh, like I said, we all want to change things. So just give it a try and tell me what you think about it. I am running here four different DACs. I've got the Gapster uh, D11 here that's based on the Dual Mono uh, DAC. And uh, beside it here we have the uh, Denafrips RS2 and uh, here my Gapster uh, TD1 DAC. And uh, below it down here we've got the uh, Denafrips uh, Terminator. I have compared the uh, Gapster TD1 DAC live basically on a quick chain like ABCD with a Flickr remote. I can switch between four different DACs that I have here right now. And finally, uh, the best sound I'm still liking is my Gapster TD1 DAC. Of course, I'm kind of biased, but uh, it's not just me. It's not, uh, I wouldn't have spent all this time if I wasn't, you know, something that's exciting me. What I would like to, uh, to tell you also is that for those of you who are really uh, want to do the, uh, the balance mode. With the balance mode, it seems to be a touch and go situation. First realize that you really have to have the proper lens UFL connectors. Anything different, you are in trouble already. Uh, trying to get two TDA chips that are close enough, it's hard, especially even if they're somewhat came from a similar, we have the similar numbers on them. These are all vintage chips and we don't know when, like it could be have the same year and stuff, but one could be made, you know, in January, one in December, and uh, they could be some, you know, these are used chips, some could have overheated over time, some are being subjected to a humid environment, so it's hard to, to get that proper chips. I'm not worried about the boards themselves because they can produce some amazing sound, but I think when you're doing a balance mode, you're trying to get the two to actually be in synergy with each other because you'll get the good sound, but the holographic sound, which is what this DAC is basically uh, excels in, it starts to sometimes lack when you're doing balance mode. Yet sometimes it feels it sounded good, and I'm still trying to figure out which what makes it tick and uh, why things are changing and also I haven't built enough power supplies to actually you know separate like all the parts that I really want to do them uh, put them in a nice enclosure also would help so all, all these things so all I'm saying is try the, the first uh, do a, um, a sim mode in a single-ended configuration and give it a listen because it does sound really good and sometimes uh, balanced mode is also overrated. A lot of equipment call themselves balanced mode. They're not actually true balanced mode. The best sound I found is always seems to be the shortest pass to the sound. So using as little components uh, with the shortest pass. And sometimes when you start to doing balanced mode, they were designed initially for long, you know, 100 meter lens cables or for basically commercial bands and to, you know you set up the band is uh, meters away and you've got the control unit there running all these cables you need something to uh, reduce so there's and then we start to use them yes they have some great advantage don't take me wrong but don't get over crazy about balance balance may not be the best so it seems like the balance mode is, is very dependent on the chips very dependent mostly on the chips i think and I'm still trying to source, I've been trying to buy different chips. I bought so many different CD players trying to pull their chips out. I don't like destroying uh, CD players that are running. I usually try to find one that's dead, that's damaged. And often I get one that's damaged and it's in me and I want to fix it. I try to fix it and some of them I was able to fix. And I said, well, I'm not going to pull the chip out of it now. So I'm limited to how many chips I can uh, pull out. And uh, bought some from here and there in different sources some are very trustworthy i am actually bought a couple or uh, just waiting for them to come like the cheapest one from china i'm trying to see like what i still haven't had a fake fake one like that sounded horrible but i've been very careful where i buy my chips from so i'm kind of curious what would a cheap uh, uh chip sound like 
and, and see maybe they are real, maybe they are good. I don't know. Let's I'll find out. I'll tell you about this probably in a few weeks when I get it. So, so yeah, so balance is dependent on all these things. So it's going to take a bit of time for me to source a few chips that try to match together. So I can give my honest opinion about it. But while we wait for all that, uh, experiment with a SIM mode because it does sound amazing. If you are building the DAC, make sure you watch the build video, especially at the beginning. There are a few things you need to know that are a must if you are building this so you don't mess things up. And also the UFL connectors are very tricky. They only have one positive and there's three negative. So you have to make sure it's oriented properly. Make sure you use a magnifier. At the beginning it looks like all square, but when you put in a magnifier, you can see there's a couple little notches on one end and then you know which side is a positive. So give that all a try and I'll put a, look, put a link in here about my first video that I made about the Gapster TD1 deck for people who have no idea what it is. And in this corner here, I'm going to put a link about the build video about the deck. There'll be a speaker in the middle if you'd like to subscribe and also my Patreon link is at the bottom if you'd like to support me. Take care and I hope to see you again.